Welcome to Tickmill Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing the 29th of March with me, Patrick Mullally. On the agenda next week, there are a few drivers which on paper look to be dollar positive. The first is the US macro data, where the March employment numbers, ADP on Wednesday and non-farm payrolls on Friday, should be strong. I'm looking for NFP to rise to around 750k versus a market consensus of 600k. The unemployment rate is also expected to dip to 5.9 to 6% from last month's 6.2%. None of this should really sway the Fed, however, which still awaits 10 million people to rediscover work and has gone out of its way to undermine the unemployment rate as a catch-all figure for those unemployed. The second key issue will be Joe Biden's launch of his three mil, uh, $3 trillion uh, infrastructure plan. I think this will be a tougher sell than the $1.9 trillion stimulus. It will also be interesting to see how the market reacts to any suggestions of tax hikes for corporates and the wealthy, and perhaps capital gains tax hike too. Um, still looking at uh, the, the technical patterns with respect to the, the dollar, we, um, we can see that going back to the high printed uh, March last year, the uh, post-pandemic high, we've got this five-wave decline, We've sorry, we've got a uh, broader impulsive decline that we're looking for a fourth wave high to print. Uh, we've had that uh, third wave complete into the 89.18 low. And we're now in a complex corrective pattern, but what I'm looking for is the dollar to continue to find support around this 92 area and for us to actually trade up now into the yearly pivot for the dollar, which comes in at uh, 94.08. We also have the 38.2% retracement of the prior decline, which will be an ideal location for this wave four high to complete. So looking for um, bullish patterns to develop at the 92 level to ultimately tra trade up to test the uh, pivot 94.12. From there, I'll be watching for bearish reversal patterns to set short positions playing for the wave five target, which should see us down at around 87.50 uh, later on. In Europe, the, uh, the clocks have actually gone forward today and on Friday the 2nd of April, uh, that's the start of the Easter holidays for much of Europe. It's been a long quarter and many will be looking to get to next Friday in one piece, I imagine. Uh, much focus will remain on the virus situation in Europe and whether lockdowns can slow, rising case numbers, and also whether the slow pace of vac vaccinations can finally reach exit speed. The data calendar for the week ahead should see a mild pickup in the pace of Eurozone CPI in March, although nothing to bother the ECB. We should also see more readings of consumer and business confidence across the region. These have held up well so far, although they have been uh, largely taken before the fresh lockdowns and also before Europe's most recent challenge, the Suez Canal blockage, which, uh, which could start to weigh on Europe's industrial sector should it not be resolved quickly. Uh, quarter end will also see focus on portfolio rebalancing flows, the first quarter European outperformance of the US both in terms of equity and bond markets could actually trigger some month end selling in the euro around the 30th and the 31st of March. So watch for potential volatility around the London fix that 4.30 time when we could see some, uh, some volatility. From a technical perspective, um, I'm looking for the euro now to test its yearly pivots here at the 117 20 area. We've also got the trend line coming in from the March lows. From here, I think we could see some corrective action and I'd look for a move, uh, a three wave pattern to ideally get a test back up into the 120 zone. But from there, I think we, uh, we're going to need to take another leg lower to ultimately test this 116 as the major support. And from there, we should have a wave four low in place in terms of this uh, broader pattern. And then I'll be looking for prices to extend higher again. Uh, the data flow in the UK was mixed last week. January unemployment dropped more than expected, with inflation, while inflation inched lower to 0.4% uh, in February against market consensus. On the inflation side, I think the drop was probably a temporary blip in the 
and in March to the 2% level later this year. Overall, with UK and EU tensions over vaccine supplies easing and vaccinations in the UK keeping a good pace, markets continue to see the UK government's timeline to reopen the economy as realistic and therefore sterling is retaining some better resilience than other G10 currencies against its dollar counterparts. We can expect that same resilience to uh, play out into next week where the calendar in the UK is quite light. On the Bank of England side, there are two scheduled speakers, Saunders and Torino, uh, both up next week, although any material deviation from the bank's recent rhetoric appears unlikely at this stage. Concerns about a worsening virus situation, the slower vaccination progress in, in the Eurozone may widen the UK-EU gap in terms of recovery expectations, adding additional support to sterling. From a technical perspective, I'm looking for sterling now to test up into uh, the 139 level from below, watching for bearish reversal patterns there to set uh, short positions targeting the equality objective versus the swing high here at 140.07 at 135.47. From there, then we could see a wave for low in place for sterling and we could see additional strength develop and ultimately take out that 140 resistance en route to testing on um, taking out the prior cycle high there at 142.43. Dolly N continues to surprise to the upside, uh, just coming shy of the 110 level on Friday. Uh, without the assistance, notably, of higher bond yields. Uh, Japanese purchases of foreign bonds have picked up in March, although we would have assumed that most of these purchases would have been FX hedged. Uh, the week ahead in Japan sees February retail sales and industrial production, plus the first quarter tank and business survey. The weaker yen must be providing some windfall gains to Japanese exporters, and a further improvement in the tank and should not be a surprise. From a technical perspective, I'm now looking for the dollar yen to test offers and stops above 110 and from here I think this would be a natural area for profit taking to develop and for us to actually put in a corrective move certainly getting a move back to retest 108.50 as support and potentially down to 107.50. Lastly, uh, the Aussie moved back above the uh, 76 handle on Friday, but was down 1.5% of the week following a combination of choppy risk sentiment and rallying yields. On the latter, the Reserve Bank of Australia has surely welcomed the 10 basis point fall in Australian 10 year yields witnessed last week, which has brought the differential with the 10 year treasuries below four basis points, the lowest since early February and a material drop from the 50 basis points peak seen in late February. This is keeping the need for more RBA interventions in the bond market low for the moment, but don't exclude more will be needed in the coming weeks if global yields start to move up again. The data calendar next week is very light in Australia with only figures from February worth highlighting. Uh, trade figures really from February are the highlights of the week. Uh, focus should remain on the oil market and its spillover on other commodities. Iron ore actually enjoyed a corrective rally uh, last week, helped by better activity outlook for China. Other threads to follow with respect to the Aussie, although the market impacts arguably could be subdued, is the EU-Australia dispute over vaccine supplies to Papua New Guinea and the floods in Sydney and New South Wales that may slow vaccination efforts. That said, I would expect external factors to remain a key driver uh, for Aussie next week. But um, whilst we can hold this 7570 as support, I'm now looking for the Aussie to test uh, 77.55 as resistance and from there I'd be looking for the final leg of this corrective move to play out to get a test of the uh, 74.50 zone which is the equality objective versus the 78.45 high. Uh, watch some bullish reversal patterns there to set long positions and set up then for a wave 5 extension higher in terms of the Aussie. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for week commencing the 29th of March. Uh, be sure to join me on Thursday for my uh, weekly live trade and market analysis sessions. And I wish you all the best of luck this week. Thanks very much.